Let's move on to a couple of trade rumors because I think that's what we're all here for, of course. Um, <laughs> this is the big part of like fucking how many things, how many darts they can throw at the fucking yeah, wall. Yeah, this is when the journos come out to play. <laughs> yeah, how many fucking bullshit ones. First one we'll start off with is the Clayton Oliver saga because what the fuck's going on? Um, Melbourne have officially ruled him out of moving. Um, yeah. I, I don't know anymore. Is he well, going? Is he staying? They're uh, saying that Geelong is still going to try and pursue it, but I don't. I don't, I don't I think Melbourne aren't going to look at it. I don't, I don't think, think they're going to budge. No. I think at this point, they've got so much to lose. There's not really... I mean, Geelong would have to pay for the contract at this point and mm. would also have to pay overs. Is it, I mean, it's such a risk for Geelong. I think that they're already going to get Bailey Smith. I think at that point, just let it ride. Yeah, I think they've got yeah, Bailey Smith. They're looking at Jack Martin. I think they just need to put, put their cues... He'll get their list of free agents. So they won't have to yeah, worry about I that. I think they just need to look at those two. I don't think there's too much... They need to see what happens with Clayton Oliver next year because now he's actually going to have the pre-season. They yeah, and again, if he if he has a good pre-season, has a good run at it, maybe Melbourne can, you know, maybe he'll have a good year yeah. and then maybe and Geelong can come out next year. Yeah. Who knows? I think that one's probably... I feel like that's going to taper off now. I don't think that's going to be a big deal. I think the Cats maybe pursue it a little bit, but I don't think they're going to push hard for yeah. it. They've got other, pl- other plans, really. I think Bailey Smith... That's as good a deal as you can get at this point. Mm. I'm looking at the Suns pick. Um, interesting one. Cool. Uh, so the Gold Coast have pick 13, which could hold the key to the Dan Houston deal, obviously. Um, even though he hasn't requested the trade to Carlton, um, that's where he kind of wants to go. I think he doesn't want to go to North Melbourne unless, you know, uh, he can't get to Carlton and he doesn't want to stay at Port Adelaide. Mm. Um, and, you know, the money's there. That's the only real yeah. reason why I feel like that. Um, but pick 13 is the deal. Collingwood and Carlton are among the pack, fiercely chasing that pick. Um, the Magpies are trying to attain pick 13 as a part of the John Noble deal. I feel like it's a bit a bit high for John Noble, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, maybe no. picks will be swip- switching and swapping each way. Um, there, is huge, there is interest in Dan Houston um, that remains strong in the meeting. Uh, last month, but it also does mean that Joe Richards could be a part of a deal if he goes to Collingwood. Um, obviously, yeah. Joe Richards' bit talking point that maybe Port Adelaide would go for him pretty hard. Um, as for as for you, obviously you're the Port Adelaide fan here. Now, obviously Harry Perryman isn't going to Port Adelaide; he's gone to Collingwood on a big money deal. How much would you would you be holding Houston no matter what, or would there be have to, would there be a deal that you could see get done? I think Port should hold. Yeah. I think there's there's not another guaranteed good def- um, rebounding defender out there at the moment. I think that like you've got the likes of Burgoyne and Kane Farrell there. They're not they're not Dan Houston. Yeah. Um. And it'd be interesting what Port Adelaide have like offered Jack Lacocious if like if if it is a forward role if it's a defensive role. My understanding is they want to play him forward. Yeah, that's what, what my... So if they're going to do that, they're going to hold firm. They should be holding firm on, on Houston because obviously he has two more years. Yeah. Three years. He has the contract still there. So he can come back. And yeah. for one thing, Port Adelaide let him go to the BNF on um, last uh, this week. So, <laughs> yeah, so Port Adelaide still have a little bit of nice heart for him. Yeah, so it's not like... like I think he wants to go home to Victoria, but I think if Port Adelaide will hold... Well, they should be holding on him. Yeah, just let him have a longer off-season in Victoria and then mm. get him back better and better. Um, other one as well, combo complica- uh, complications for deals. Geelong's chaser, Bailey Smith, and Fremantle's pursuit of Shea Bolton are among a host of deals that could be complicated um, by a suite of compensation picks. Um, with obviously the ones of like Josh Battle and Perryman, pretty high picks. The Cats pick 15 is learned to be pivotal in the talks with the Western Bulldogs. But it's been pretty hard to talk about the Western two of the Western Bulldogs about Bailey Smith. There's been a little bit of talk that there hasn't been any talk between both the clubs. Mm. Um, obviously, this has been brewing for 18 months. I've been like, yeah. this has been a trade rumor. Even we talked, we talked about last year that Bailey Smith was going to be leaving the Bulldogs. Mm. Um, I've always felt that at the end of the day, the Bulldogs have had themselves to blame. Um, yeah, they should have been playing him in the correct position. But yeah, obviously the big talking points about that. The Gold Coast want probably more number of picks because they've got a couple of um, academy draftees they want to pick up. Leo Lombard and is probably the big one that they want to pick up. Uh, that's probably likely going to be going in round one. Looking at a couple of Giants players, um, 
the Giants are pretty determined to hold on to wanted pair Xavier O'Halloran and Wade Dirksen to their contracts. Um, obviously, already losing coming Perryman and um, Haynes in the first day of the trade period and also the requested move of James Peatling. They don't want to lose two other players. Yeah. Um, Xavier O'Halloran's an interesting one. I think he's always been on the fringe of the Giants. I don't know much about Wade Dirksen, but obviously he has requested a trade to the Melbourne Football Club. Mm. So uh, O'Halloran has had interest from what the Western Bulldogs. So who knows if we get a bloody game there. But uh, I think that O'Halloran, I, he's always felt like a player that you could definitely, he definitely fills a role. Yeah. So I think that's why the Giants probably want to hold him because they obviously have all the like, big money players, but also they need those um, role players. The question is, do they are they is he in their best twenty three round one next year? Who knows? I don't really think so. Um, but yeah, I think I feel like Dirksen eventually will go. I feel like Melbourne will just pay a little bit overs for him at this stage. Mm. That's probably what I'm thinking. Um, Collingwood remains a potential landing spot for out of contract key defender Adam Tomlinson, thirty one years of age. Um, that was a word for Mark Keane earlier in the year. That one obviously didn't work out. Adam Tomlinson. Obviously, a bit older, but I feel like at a club like Collingwood, he could definitely thrive there. They do need um, more key positions, but I don't know. Does it really feel like a key defender's their option? I, I mean, I, I don't think it's a bad option, but... I think if they bring him in, they can use that Darcy Moore um, role to what they want, because they yeah. want him to be the more of the interceptor, and they couldn't do it this year with all the injuries they had defensively. Yeah. So I think it will be it would be a good option for them... To, to bring in L, um, Tomlinson just for that role, yeah. Because I think that like Jeremy Jeremy Howe could obviously play a little bit more. That means that Darth, that means that uh, Billy Frampton could then go to someone mm. as a lockdown with Tomlinson. So yeah, maybe more you think about it, it's a good idea. Charlie Dean is one that hasn't been re-signed yet. That's probably one that they're waiting for. Um, yeah, seeing how it works yeah, out. Yeah. Also, it looks like the St Kilda are looking at Tomlinson as well, um, and maybe even um, the Gold Coast have also made interest in him as well. So we'll have to wait and see on that front. Um, Looks like at the moment, a couple of like NGA pickups and the Swans are looking at another academy prospect. One is called Joel Cochran. Um, got, what did he get first? Honours. Oh, he claimed first honours at the weekend draft combine with winning the Friday's 2K time trial. Just another academy prospect for the Sydney Swans. Love to see it. Um, that's basically all the trade news on that day. Go to another one here. This is the one from this afternoon. Um, so right now, I'm thinking that they won't be done mostly... This is obviously Monday today. I think there may be a couple done, but not really a magic, massive one. You, you pretty much get, um, on the first day of the trade period, you get the ones that are, mo- are pretty bloody easy to do. That it's pretty much just the player for a pick or a player for a player. Then then later in the p- period, you have those days that nothing happens for like two or three days. Yeah. And then you'll get, at the end, you'll get everyone fucking rushing and they fucking fuck it up and... Yeah, someone will pay overs or someone will pay yeah. unders for it. Yeah. So one, a couple of ones here for North Melbourne. Jack Darling um, obviously will join North Melbourne. It looks like pick 67 has been agreed upon. That's basically just, just go at this yeah. point. Um, Luke Park is an interesting one, though. Pe- talks have yet to progress on a deal with him. Um, I'm still disappointed by Sydney, you know, the treatment of him whatsoever. I'd almost be giving... I wouldn't be giving him another year, but maybe just giving him a bit extra on his contract. Do something. He was really good for Sydney the later parts of the year. It did show that they do need, still need that experienced head in there and um, was one of the better players in the final series. Mm. But I feel like he wants to go more just to um, just to maybe uh, with maybe the future of his life, probably maybe wants to live in Victoria. Um, coaching probably something that he wants to pursue as well. So I think that's one. Similar to like um, Sam Mitchell, who went to the West Coast towards his end of his career. That's kind yeah. of how it will work out. And also the Kangaroos are still waiting on Caleb Daniel to see if he wants to request a trade to... Um, North Melbourne, obviously, he's still got two years remaining at the Bulldogs, but North Melbourne are coming in with the big bucks here. I think he just has to go. Uh, I, he's just not getting a game at the Dogs, and Bevo doesn't want to play him. Yeah. I mean, he's one of the better kicks in the comp, but we'll have to wait and see if they actually really want to go for him or if they want to just wait around and see what happens. Um, obviously, big, cu- big couple of trades, Tom Barras, Liam Baker... Daniel Rioli, Shea Bolton, and Jack Lacocious are some big ones looking at it right now. Tom Barras is an interesting one. I feel like they're going to have to play a bit overs here, Hawthorne, to get him in. Um, I, I know West Coast have said that they will get a deal done, but they've also got to do the best what, what's best for them. Yeah. So I think they are going to push hard. Liam Baker wants to go to West Coast. Daniel Rioli to the Gold Coast. Shea Bolton still hasn't elected a club yet. Mm. You think there's still a more to play out there? Free out of the front runners, but 
obviously with the Andrew McWalter signing at the West Coast Eagles, do yeah, you think there's a chance? I think there is. I think I think he will pursue it. I think he'll go to the West Coast, to be honest. I really do. I don't know. I feel like the Fremantle are the front runners here. I still think that Fremantle, they're obviously... West Coast are obviously... That's the club where Andrew McWalter is. He's still got time in his career to potentially get them back up there. And maybe more money reasons could maybe we get to West Coast. But Fremantle are so close to a premiership. Mm. That, well, a potential A good, a good push. finals push, yeah. Yeah, so I think that one's going to happen. Jack Lacocious, what do you think he's worth? Uh, around the compos that, that were given today, about um, last week with pick 16 and 19. I think he's around that late first rounder. I don't think he's a, he's an early first rounder. Not oh, not, I wouldn't not, say not, that. Not, I was going to be honest with you. I was going to say maybe an early second round pick, to be honest. But yeah, well, that's what, that's what the Gold yeah. Coast will ask for more. A late, yeah, a late first, early second. The way he's played, the way that he's not get he, like I said, he was dropped at the start of the, during the year. Yeah, but some some games, so you can't say that he's worth a first an early first rounder. Yeah. And then also on Cosy Pickett, there's still a little bit of rumours about the potential of him wanting to explore a deal back to WA. I feel like that's only Fremantle. I don't think West Coast yeah, no. have really joined the party for I think, that one. I think, they want to go for a premiership, I yeah. feel like. And I think that West Coast have already put, have so many hands in other baskets around these Richmond players and other yeah. players that they can't really go for him. Yeah. So I think that... I, I don't think that will happen. I feel like Cosy Pickett will stay at the Demons. Yeah. I but there is still a couple of whispers around Cosy Pickett and if he wants to go back to WA. If he does go, what do you think kind of like a, a pick would be? I feel like mid to late first round. Yeah. But, um, I mean, if you're looking like small forwards in the past who have been traded, like Charlie Cameron, uh, even Tom Papley when there was talk about him, there was like that middle first round pick to late first round. Yeah. I still think that he's kind of behind those two as like small mm. forwards. So I'd say late first round pick. Yeah. Um, but Fremantle have got a couple of picks. And obviously, a lot of talk is still surrounding Chad Warner at the Sydney Swans. I don't think this will happen until next year um, when the Frio have, obviously... They'll obviously have picks for next year, but they also... The AFL are opening up that you can go another year in advance to drop um, future picks. Mm. So I think Fremantle are going to wait for that and just throw everything at Sydney. Yeah. yeah. If Chad Warner wants to eventually go. He is a West Coast fan as a kid, but I don't think that's really a matter. Um, to be honest with you, especially mm. when money's involved. Um, do you think, obviously this is very early on, I don't think this is going to happen this trade period no matter what happens. I, on the side of like, this is 50-50 on the Swan side, what do you think? Do you think he's gone or do you think that this will... I think that Sydney are, have put some money into other players. I think that Chad Warner, Chad Warner will eventually go. Yeah. I really do. I think it's more about 70-30 at the moment. Free, well, WA. Yeah. I think he will go. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm probably thinking that, yeah, the more it sits around, the more I'm thinking, yeah, if Sydney, especially if Sydney do push hard and get a premiership next year, knock on wood, um, that would be a way to get, I mean, they've been talking as well. If Sydney did win this flag this year, that he would have gone, that he would have requested a move straight away. Mm. Um that's really the only reason why he's staying, which, I mean, you could say it's a bit selfish, but I think, like, every AFL player wants to get that flag. Well, you could say that, look, about Joe, uh, Joe Danaher last year, the yeah. last two years, is that he was going to retire at the end of last year. Which, by the way, I don't think so. I don't think it's selfish. No. I think it's, a, it's, it's, a, good, a, it's a, you know, an achievement that every AFL player wants to get to. But I know some people would think, oh, that's selfish. It's mm. like, no. But also, you've got to think, well, he wants to do it with that team. Yeah, like, exactly. He had it last year with um, Joe Danaher with Brisbane. He didn't get it. But he wanted one more shot with the team that he has yeah. to do it. I mean, you can say the same thing about Chad Warner. He wants to do it with the Swans. Because, I mean, if you think about it, if he went to Fremantle this year, or he wanted to anyway, um, they could potentially go for the flag. They mm. would just miss the eight. But, you know, they've got such a good team, the Dockers. But he wants to do it with the Swans. So, yeah. I mean, guys, make sure to let us know down below what you think about a couple of the trade rumours going around at the moment. Obviously, there's so many and really hard to track how each one's going one day Clayton Oliver wants to go it looks like he's going to go the next day Melbourne are locking him to his contract so many talking points so let us know down below what you feel about with the AFL trade rumours and stuff